bumpies. The bump-headed parrotfish. Honestly, a face only a mother could love. We first saw these come on the fly fishing radar out of the Seychelles. And there's actually a lot of them in Australia, just mostly in unlandable terrain. So when Cocos Keeling Islands came along and we saw it was possible to catch them there, well, I guess in a time like this, with not many travel options, it was time to pack the bags. Australian passport. Didn't think I'd use that again for a while. Had to dust it off, but we've just arrived in Perth and gonna take a trek over to the Cocos, but first gonna drop in and see Dan over at Flyworld. He's caught a few bumpies before and that's something I wanna know something about. Dan, how are you? Good, Good are to you? meet you. Yeah, Finally. <laughs> These blue holes here are, are, are some of the most gorgeous parts of the planet you're ever going to fish. GTs, uh, you name it, they're, they're, mm. you know, all the crazy fish, coral trout, they're, they're all in the blue hole. If we can catch one thing this trip, like literally if I can catch one fish, bumpy. Cocos. Uh, I don't know about bumpy fishing anywhere else on the planet. All I know is Cocos. Yeah. I can do it from the car. <laughs> If you want a bumpy, then we're talking oceanic. You'll get them in the lagoon, and they will be on the outskirts of all of these blue holes. <laughs> but if you really, you know, want to focus on bumpies, yeah, okay. then, then work the oceanic um, run. So basically 99% of our trip, that's where we're going to be. Bumpy town. Yeah, good luck, my man. You got it. <laughs> Boom. I think when people are sitting in an office or working from home and you start to let your mind drift and you think of a paradise, it, it's probably somewhere with palm trees, white sand, beautiful clear water. And, and this is that spot. This has all of that. People come here just to lie on a beach all week and enjoy it. We have the added luxury of chasing things around with a fly rod and adds to our enjoyment. Yeah, it's an interesting place, Cocos, because you come a long way and you land on this island full of you know, coconut trees and atoll sort of vibes. You just kind of have something in your head that you expect, whether that's like a really remote Pacific atoll or Indian Ocean place, but it's got this Australian twist to it. So it's all the same cars, you know, the same accents, and it, it really is a unique place because of that. that. I can't think of anywhere else within the Australian regions that would carry that same vibe. We're gonna hit up some tailing bonefish out the front here. Hopefully on the way back we might see some surfing bonefish, um, which is pretty cool, so. Just eight weights here? Just eight weights, yeah. So, hitting the bonefish today. Sight fishing, tailing, should be pretty sick. <laughs> Look at this fella, what a ripper. And cruising down the flats there, seeing him from a mile away. Really beautiful spot here. There's a big school of nice sized bones out here. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Yes. Nice bone. Catch as many as you want, I guess. When it comes to Australia, there are certainly bonefish around mainland. When I think bonefish fishing, you know, I, I want to be in knee deep water at most. And, and this place, I believe, would be the only place that offers that within the Australian region. And it's a world-class fishery. There really is a lot of bonefish here. Run, buddy, run, run, run! Ugh, I'm gonna free spool you, go, 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 not to me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Jeeves! Get out of it! Get out! 
Bloody hell. That was an ideal. It's an interesting one with the sharks and I've fished a lot of different places that have sharks. These sharks certainly have a love for bonefish. I discovered that on the first day or two. Certainly had a few go through the legs, a few bump into the legs and it does make you kind of want to walk on when you have about 15 sharks circling around you. I am not loving this at all. That's cooked. Screw that. It's over time we got a little bit creative. There was one where the shark just wouldn't give up on this bonefish. And so I ended up just whacking the net right in front of the shark and I had him in the net for a while, which put the wind up him. Finally got the net back in the net of the bonefish and yeah, he got away nice. Holy crap. Shark's in the net. <laughs> That's not ideal. <laughs> How funny was that? I netted the shark. That's how you land a bonefish. He's lucky to make it out alive, that one. Those sharks were on us. Knowing what's available in Cocos is another really cool thing. The variety here is intense. You've got GTs, you've got bumpies, you've got coral trout. Just knowing that anything could rock up at any time means you've got to be prepared. Got a monster barracuda mate, so I cast in about eight foot of water. Can hardly lift. <laughs> Going to Direction Island after a few sharky days on the flats, the guys mentioned there's not many sharks, but on this particular day, there was a lot of sharks. So obviously this bait had sort of congregated and the sharks had come in on it. I mean, there would have been hundreds of sharks and on the edge of those big bait balls and the sharks were like the GTs would come in and lurk around, seeing how they were actually actively spraying that bait everywhere. How insane is this? Well, these sharks, craziest thing I've ever seen. Honestly, it was one of those things where I'm sure it might happen once a month over the summer period, who knows, but we were there at the right time and it all came together. <laughs> Holy moly, this is an absolute donkey. We've just stumbled across this big school of GTs and sharks. I don't know, the whole water's black of fish. Sixth thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh. oh, yes, here we go. Oh, this one. Oh. It's good to hold confidence in a trip, even when things aren't particularly going the way that you'd like them to go. Frig, you rocks. Ah, oh, freaking rock. That's just got so much current. That sucks. Didn't like that. That was the best shot I've had yet at the bumpies. I was right in the middle of them. Unfortunately, my crab was stuck in the coral. Yeah, yeah, you creep in, you do all the right things, you get in the right spot, you think you got the right fly, who knows? Most of the time they just spook before you even get to be in the school. It could be an hour to that next shot, it could be two hours to that next school. So it's a little bit disheartening. You know, we were on our last full day and 
you wake up thinking, if I don't catch a bumpy today, it's probably not gonna happen. On the last day, we didn't have a car, our car broke down. Like, it's a harsh territory out here. And so we were almost forced into this perfect thing, which is literally like, walk from the lodge, walk down the flat, see what we find. And even at that point, I was casting at bonefish. I literally just remember turning around, seeing tails, making the cast, and it was perfect. They were feeding onto where I was standing. They were just coming up the flat. It was meant to be. Sometimes it's just meant to be. I had very little time to tell anyone what was going on. It was literally just throw in on, and suddenly we are running towards the reef. You've just hooked this fish that you've wanted to obtain for so long. You've dreamt about it, and you know there's so, like hooking it is just the 10% part. It's like you, there's so much more that has to happen. Suddenly, you feel like you're 100 meters from this fish that's backing out. It is intense. You're standing in the wash, you're standing in coral cracks right on the edge of the reef. It's not really a fish for the faint of heart. It's right here. You get all that backing in, the fly line's back at the reel, your heart's pumping even more. You're, like, you're thinking, I've got a chance. I definitely came to Cocos to catch a bumpy. That's the fish I wanted to catch. I wanted to catch something here that was different that I couldn't obtain elsewhere in Australia. So knowing that there's a chance to catch one here, it was my goal. And so it felt good. Like, I can't say that maybe that was the only time I've had that sense of achievement because you set goals all the time and you go out and if you, you know, sometimes it fails, sometimes you win. But for this week, that was the greatest feeling for me. There is literally only one thing I've wanted in Cocos Islands, and that's it. Yes! <laughs> yes! Wow.